hello guys welcome back to CFS video tutorials in this video tutorial we will go through uh, a single story uh, shear wall express shear wall actually so once you open CFS uh, you can see your modules like this and over here under expresses just select sample okay so now over here I'll write down my Express name, whatever it might be. Okay, next uh, the length of the panel. Let's say I have 10 foot length of the panel, and even the height of the panel is 10 foot. Next thing I would like to enter is so right now my seismic load is one pounds, and wind load. Let's say I have 5000 pounds, nothing but five caps. Okay. So once I enter that, these are my results actually, but like I'm just starting right now. Now next going to strap data, I'll select two sides. I want my strap on both the sides and I want six inch strap on both sides and I'll select this will be my gauge. So 0 0.0566 inches means 16 gauge whereas this 0 0.07113 inches means 14 gauge and 0 0.1017 inches means 12 gauge. I'll select 16 gauge. So now 16 gauge works over here and also for 16 gauge you need to select 50 ksi. So if you have 18 or 20 gauge in that scenario you use 33 ksi whereas 16 gauge and above nothing but 16 gauge 14 gauge 12 gauge you use 50 ksi next coming to the cord and hold down data tab so i won't be i don't have any additional uh, axial load coming onto the panel and like onto those end cords so i won't be entering any additional loads my axial bracing would be midpoint and nothing distortional buckling imports okay so coming to the hold down as you can see my result is HTT4331.57 this needs to be the interaction ratio needs to be less than one so what I'll do is like uh, before that I need to change my end studs so let's assume the wall is a six inch wall I mean the width of the wall is six inch and I'm using six inch studs so my end studs let's I'm using six, 16 gauge material and I use two end studs so if I have single end stud as you can see my interaction ratio is 0 0.78 which is still fine if I make it back to back it goes to 0 0.32 so for example if my load was 10 caps in that scenario my interaction ratio would be 1.56 so I need to see to it that my interaction ratio is less than 1 so I'll be changing the end studs to back to back or I can even change it to boxed so once I change it to back to back the interaction ratio goes down now the only thing remaining is um, the hold downs so I would suggest doing the hold downs manually I mean you can just go in here and based on the 16 gauge stud let's say I use S H D A D S 254 so still 1.13 now if I go to next higher bigger uh, hold down so this gives me 0 0.82 but I would still say yes HD ATS 254 will still work I'll explain you how in just few minutes let's go to strap connections tab before that so over here the strap needs to be connected to the end studs 
and there are two ways it can be connected so it can be connected horizontally and vertically like the screws will be connected horizontally to the bottom track and vertically it will be connected to the end studs or you can say in pure tension so that way the strap comes in and gets connected to the studs connection types you have strong drive fasteners weld fasteners generic fasteners the typical uh, connection type is generic fasteners and this varies actually like so if I do vertical and horizontal okay and right now uh, I'm assuming my studs are 16 gauge material so my bottom track and top track will be 16 gauge material so my capacity would also be based on 16 gauge material so I have number 10 54 mil so 406 similarly I'll select bottom connection vertical horizontal generic fasteners number 10 this capacity varies as per different books so you might need to look into that but if you want to enter like whatever value manually you can enter it it works like that too but right now I'm gonna go with 10 54 mil 54 mil is nothing but 16 gauge material now once again I come back to my cord and hold down data so my interaction is 1.13 now let me go back go to the summary report over here so once I select that uh, it generates a PDF file I mean you can download it and output of this design you have done just now so there is my model and length and width the wind applied is 10 caps the wind drift I'm getting is 0 0.32 inches next going down so this is the strap design tension okay yield stress is given we specified this cr this criteria 6 inch 16 gauge material allowable strap tension is 10,168 pounds per strap which is in more than enough I mean uh, we are just getting 7,071 as of now now strap connection so as you can see uh, we need 13 fasteners horizontally and 13 fasteners vertically so we will be connecting 13 fasteners horizontally and then 13 fasteners vertically Cord data now going to the yes going to my hold down so this interaction ratio is based on just uh, the wind load right now 1.13 but I mean uh, so I mean based on the uplift you get this interaction ratio but what we don't consider is the dead load coming onto this panel so once the wind load is applied uh, this portion like tries to move up I mean uplift and this is going down so but we need we also during uh, uplift calculation we also need to subtract the dead load on that panel so this reduces your net uplift and this interaction becomes less than one which is usually calculated manually I mean using Excel sheets or any other programs if you have but yeah we cannot if we add dead load add, under additional dead load tab in CFS it will affect our end studs so yeah you can either design the strap I mean design the end studs or design the hold down I would go like designing with end studs and then I'll do uh, the hold down manually I mean you have uh, hold down catalogs like to decide which hold down to select based on the net uplift so this would be the simple shear wall design in CFS uh, if you have any questions please comment below and please subscribe let thank you for watching the video